The biggest lessons I've learned in my life are here. Through different topics, I'm going to inspire and motivate you to reach your success and your dreams. I'm so grateful that you're here on Journey to Success. So let's enjoy my next episode together. Let's talk about Frodo Baggins. Frodo Baggins is uh, an old from Middle Earth. He's brave, altruistic, caring, wise, attentive, and very polite. Frodo, by mistake or by fate, finds himself on a path full of obstacles, uh, stepping out of his comfort zone, triggered by the ring. He fights with uh, different enemies and dangers, such as Augustus, a spider, the eye and the ring itself, which proves to be a real threat. Let's not forget the presence of Gollum and many other challenges. So Frodo falls and gets up, falls and gets up again and again until he finally achieves his goal of destroying the threat of Sauron and saving the world, making it a better place. During his journey, especially in the early stages of his adventure, he also managed to achieve small successes, which can enlighten the path, sometimes thinking he has reached the goal, a goal that seems to be still far. Frodo is not that different from us, thinking about it. Frodo is each of us, a friend, a drinking body, a simple person. Let's analyze the situation a bit. Frodo is a person without powers. So Frodo is not Aragorn, the the college quarterback, or Gandalf, the smart guy of the class. In a work context, uh, Frodo identifies more as a customer care representative, (laughs) one of many, while Aragorn is uh, the team leader at least in the first uh, um, stage of the adventure, and uh, Galfa is the manager, and so on. He's just a person with a big trigger. That's it. Each of us has a trigger. Let's call it a seed that installs itself in our brain and doesn't want to go away. It grows bigger and bigger until it reaches a point where it seems to be almost popping out of our head and forming a plant made of roses and countless thorns. The roses represent our dreams, and the thorns are all the obstacles we will face. So I say to myself, it's almost obvious that the the average person doesn't want to achieve their dreams because they see so many thorns along the way that they cannot see the rose around the corner, covered in a wild amount of weeds and even more thorns. According to the World Research Group, 98% of people die without realizing their dreams. This um, obvious fact, which I won't try to justify, it's sad. But it is also derived from eight powerful excuses that we make every day. It is too difficult, I'm too old or too young, depending on the case. I'm too busy, others think like I shouldn't or couldn't. It is not realistic, I'm afraid, I don't want to. And uh, lastly, I don't understand why I should do it. For some reason this research didn't have the phrase I don't have time, (laughs) but I can say I don't have time. Tell me, how much time do you need? Honestly, I would prefer if you say it is not my priority, because it is not about time, it is about priority, simple priority. Now let's go back to Frodo. Frodo's case is a bit the opposite. If it were up to him, he would stay home, writing a novel and drinking butterbeer with his friends. 
In this case, it was the people around him who pushed, motivated, urged him, some convincing him that this was the right path to follow. But it doesn't matter if someone pushes you on, if you have friends, if you are the son of a famous actor, if you have money. The truth is that if you are not consistent, persistent and disciplined in what you do, adding also a huge dose of determination, you'll never be able to achieve your goals. Why don't you want to leave this comfort zone that imprisons you? Maybe it's the fear of not making it? Or maybe just because chilling around and watching Netflix is more important than achieving success? There is nothing wrong with um, accepting your current life if it satisfies you, okay? Because it's thanks to a worker that we live in a warm house. It's thanks to an electrician that we can uh, communicate at this moment. And thanks to a waiter that we can sit and enjoy the dishes we ordered and so on. But you have to admit it. Not be hypocritical and admit that average life satisfies you. There is nothing wrong with that. Don't be ashamed. But if it doesn't satisfy you, I mean, what are you waiting for? Personally, my biggest fear is a meaningless death. Or rather, not having actually the opportunity to transmit something of mine in this world. For two main reasons. First reason. Leaving a mark in this world. I have to admit, it could be a selfish reason. But I have this burning desire to leave something in this world, a legacy. Second reason, the need to help others with my words. I don't consider myself a professional or a coach or anything like that. I'm a normal person who has failed a lot in life to learn even more. And what I desire is that people can learn from my mistakes or from the mistakes of others so that they can become better human beings. Of course, I don't think my way is better, but it can certainly awaken the listener, for better or for worse, regardless of how right or wrong my thinking is. Also, regardless of the advice I will give, I am a promoter of failure, because only through failure can one learn, improve and understand the way forward. Let's go back to Frodo. What Frodo has in common with uh, every person who overcomes adversity is becoming stronger during their journey. Frodo's journey lasts about 17 years. He has no skills, he's no strong, he's a normal person, and yet, with the help of his friend Sam, he managed to destroy the ring. A friend who supported him. That's another point. Having someone next to you, in one way or another, helps a lot. I think of my partner, for example. She's definitely my compass. When I do too much and overheat, she slows me down. As she always says, keep the knife sharp. A concept she had extrapolated from The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a book by Stephen Covey. Here, I'm going to tell you a part of this story. Imagine a guy taking a walk in the forest when he comes across a man sowing a tree. What are you doing? He asks. I'm sowing a tree, he says. How long have you been working on it? He asks. Two or three hours so far, he says, with sweat dripping from his chin. Your soul doesn't seem sharp, he says. Why don't you take a break and sharpen it? I can't. I'm too busy sewing, is his response. As outsiders, we could see that the cutting process was dueling the blade, and the dueler the blade, the more effort it takes to keep sewing. The solution, of course, was for the lumberjack 
to stop periodically to sharpen the saw. He was so blind in the situation that he couldn't see the need to take a break and do what was necessary to make his job easier. During the journey to success, we meet situations and people directly and indirectly, regardless if the circumstances are positives or negatives. These situations and people push us to reach our right path, our right place and be closer to our right goal. Sam, the friend of Frodo, was a person like many others. Some say he was mentally stronger than Frodo. I don't think there is a stronger or weaker one in these stories. It depends on the type of weight the protagonist carries. If the weight becomes increasingly heavy, almost like a rock that becomes more and more important day by day, it is not fundamental how persistent or disciplined we actually are, because we still become blind. And it had happened to Frodo. It happens to me when I lost my compass. It happens to any one of us who becomes too focused on a goal, obscuring what is around them, when sometimes it's actually the key to succeed. So our vision can be more clear. Breathe and take breaks, like Frodo did with his bread during his path and you will have a clearer view of what you can do. In my case, I reopened the podcast after almost one year. I was traveling in Morocco with my partner, and I had enough of posting on social media regarding motivational speaking. After almost a year, I didn't really see any visible progress. And honestly, I didn't want to invest time and money into something I wasn't 100% sure about. This break of about 10 days of holiday made me think about what I actually wanted to do with my life. My next step. It's damn hard for me to take breaks and breathe for a moment. Yet, this forced break made me realize a path I absolutely had to take. Honestly, I still don't know if the podcast is my 100% goal, but it's definitely a path to reach a goal that is not yet well defined. And it is okay like that. That's the game to reach a better purpose. What I definitely know is the fact of uh, helping others. I light up every time I hear people's dream of wanting to achieve something. This dream in the drawer that they keep guarded near their bed, as if it were their secret treasure not to be used yet. Just a few days ago, I met my partner's cousin and uh, her partner, lovely and delightful people. She holds a respectable position in the clothing market, and uh, I was amazed by how she started from the bottom as a sales clerk and worked her way up to become a manager of the wall woman's department. It is amazing. However, at the same time, her passion was uh, journalism. And when I asked her uh, when she planned to start pursuing it, she said, next year. I replied, well, why not this year? Next year, tomorrow, after the holidays, in a week. These are excuses that protect us from the reality that we are not ready to leave this comfort zone yet. A comfort zone that cradles us like a sweet little devil singing a lullaby to their child. The comfort zone is not a negative thing, but when it kills our dreams, then it becomes one. What I told this girl is that we only live once, and after this life we don't know what will happen. The only thing we can do is take advantage of what life is offering us right now, in this moment. I told her to write one line a day, and in 360 days she will have composed approximately 10 pages of documentation. And she promised me that she would do it. Some may think that 10 pages are not many for a journalist in a year, but they are a lot if compared to a person who is straddled by their comfort zone. The comfort zone can sometimes be a comfortable mattress on the floor, ready to save us in case of danger. Other times it can be a prison and the only way to get out is to figure out how to open the door. It's a particular prison, built from within, so sometimes you just have to take the key next to you to open the door. 
a typical example of a person with a burning passion that they still don't want to satisfy. Other times you have too many keys and many doors, and you have to figure out which one to use every time. A typical example of a person still searching for the right dream to pursue. But you have control of this prison. You can expand it, shrink it, make it more or less comfortable. But you have the power to live and make your life better by fulfilling your dreams and taking control thanks to a life that someone has uh, gifted us. A God, an energy, nature perhaps, it doesn't matter, it's a gift. And the only thing you can do with such a gift is to live it day by day in such a way that it can bear the desired fruits. Frodo was forced to reach a goal by fate. But talking about us, we have the choice to pursue a goal or not, regardless of whether we are forced by destiny or we choose it ourselves. The recurring theme is always the same. Consistency for greater success in achieving your goals in an increasingly shorter time. Persistence to soften the blows during failures which, let's remember, teach us how to improve and succeed afterwards. Discipline. By acting systematically, it will be easier to build the necessary resistance to be consistent and persistent during our journey. So what are you waiting for to finally face the path that awaits you? It could be an even more exciting and beautiful adventure than Frodo's and finally you'll be the protagonist of your story. Here we are. Congratulations. You just finished my entire episode. So, the only thing I ask is to take a moment to give Journey to Success a rating. By the way, thank you so much for being here on Journey to Success. I'm very grateful. Thank you and see you next time.